um, Oracle. Mike, Eric. could you give us um, the global practice in how ICT gets to a developed system of government like ours? Yes. What, is, what is the best practice in, 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 in the places you've been? Thank you, John. And maybe I'd, I'd like to suggest that uh, as a first step in establishing what infrastructure is required, uh, one needs to look at what services uh, and what functions the counties um, are tasked with delivering. And I think there needs to be a different approach to the provision of, of uh, ICT infrastructure. Um, our experience is that there tends to be a lot of focus on the hardware and networking components uh, and that only after that infrastructure has been in place uh, is there any thought or consideration to the kind of services that need to be delivered. And our suggestion would be that as a first step, one considers what kind of service delivery architecture needs to be put in place, and that will then determine what kind of infrastructure is required, and in, in turn, what uh, uh, methods can be used to deliver that infrastructure, whether it's through a cloud, whether it's through shared services, um, et cetera. And the reason why I stress the need for the upfront consideration and design of the service delivery architecture is if we consider that we were facing this task 10 years ago, the emphasis might have been, if considering service delivery, that the focus would have been on uh, contact centers or, um, or call centers. Um, and we would not have considered technologies like the social media today, things like Facebook, uh, YouTube, etc., and part of service delivery today obviously includes making use of the latest technologies, um, and I think the challenges today in designing an infrastructure is trying to take into account the advances that will occur within infrastructure within the years ahead and trying to remain as agile as possible. Thank you. Um, please remember that we will be focusing more on you as we have been guided today. So please note some of the comments because um, I will be um, giving you the chance to discuss this, this very <coughs> important topic. Uh, let me go to Telcom Kenya. George, what is the Kenyan experience so far in using ICT in developed government or, or, or machinani, when I say machinani? Uh, thank you, John. Um, from our operator standpoint, uh, we do recognize and appreciate the role of ICT, uh, both in uh, Vision 2030, in delivering the key initiatives of Vision 2030, and also in uh, enhancing uh, service delivery within the county government. Um, now, our experience so far, we've been going around the country, we've visited uh, several counties in the past month, month and a half. And uh, the flavor we get is different uh, depending on, uh, on where you go. And one of the biggest observations I think we've seen is uh, one shoe doesn't fit, one size doesn't fit all, you know, as my colleague here said. Uh, most of the counties haven't identified what services uh, they need to run or what they need to to deliver, you know, through through the infrastructure. So, one of the best approaches we think from a telco providers, or oh, most of the telco providers, is um, maybe the counties need to take a little bit of a different uh, approach, you know, uh, whereby we em we embrace, you know, emerging technologies, you know, such as infrastructure as a service, as opposed to actually uh, investing or having the counties invest in infrastructure, you know. Uh, just as a way of, uh, of making sure that, that the technology they're using is less susceptible to, uh, you know, uh, age or <coughs> technological refreshes, you know, and, uh, and also to give it a little bit of more flexibility or provide some level of flexibility uh, to deliver services as they come, you know, as uh, my colleague here said. Thanks, uh, George. Um, I will direct the next question to Jamie. My friend John, 
Um, and th this question more relates to, I don't know what you have done so far, I'm, I'm sure you've, you've done massive um, uh, ICT infrastructure, and <coughs> I'm sure you are guided by <coughs> uh, making profit. Would, would you, does it pay to go and invest in accounts, or they have to pay for you to put it there? Okay, probably I'll start off by tackling the first issue of who is responsible for getting the county connected. And uh, my answer right now is that uh, this cannot be left to just one single entity. That is, be it be the county government or the central government or the private sector. And I think, uh, first of all, just to reiterate, at Jami, we have a deliberate effort right now to ensure that we have a presence in all the county headquarters. Uh, today, we already passed, uh, I think, already past 35 counties uh, that we've already connected. And uh, our target is by the end of this year that we'll have a presence in each and every uh, county location. Uh, however, let me put it like this, uh, that um, if you look at some of the countries where devolution has worked, um, one of the key unifying factors for counties was uh, the development of the railroad, uh, which was very important in the past years. We also had the highway system, like in the US, and then uh, currently we have broadband. Now, unfortunately here in Kenya, I think we've concentrated on uh, the highways, but there's no, I mean, there's no deliberate effort by the central government to make sure that uh, you have broadband. Uh, what I'd like to see is a situation whereby you have uh, a national broadband authority, whereby as you build the power lines, like the way you have Ketraco, Ketraco, you also have a broadband authority that makes sure that all the counties are connected. Otherwise, I see a situation whereby most of the counties may end up uh, focusing the energies on the wrong, you know, the wrong efforts. Uh, if you have a county like in, let's say, in Mandera trying to connect to the internet, they have to transverse across all these other counties. I don't be believe that is the right approach. However, I think uh, we have some initiatives that have been put in, like the North B, but I don't think enough is being done. I think it's being done uh, not as a priority. We should actually, right now, prioritize broadband the same way we are prioritizing uh, energy, I mean power transmission, and the same way we are prioritizing uh, uh, highway construction. So at Jami, it's deliberate. We've seen uh, the, um, uh, the opportunity. Uh, however, um, as you are aware, you cannot, like, you cannot wake up and do a fiber all the way to Garissa. We ride on other infrastructures which are there. But I think if all these efforts are brought together, but because today if you're constructing a power line, it's obvious that uh, you'll probably put fiber. But again, uh, the power company is working independently, not knowing that they're actually part of uh, the ICT infrastructure. Uh, but if you had a uh, broadband authority, they'll probably be able to bring out uh, all these authorities together. Like even today when you build a highway, if you're building a highway from here to Garissa, uh, it's obvious that uh, we actually need some probably ducting to make sure that we can put fiber onto it. So for JTL, the, the business opportunity is there. I mean, for all the county representatives who are here, we have a deliberate effort and uh, Probably after this, you can see you can see us at our stand, and we'll show you all the county locations where we have our fiber <coughs> presence. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think that I hear in terms of putting up infrastructure to include ICT as well, together with the road, uh, for example. Uh, let me ask DD, let me Andrew. Um, we've had a lot of issues in government where various architecture or various organizations actually, um, the various technology used by different organizations are not quite compatible. You know, we have had this problem where uh, the GCCN, which is the backbone in Nairobi, could not quite communicate with the North B until you bring in another technology. Um, so let me ask, uh, I mentioned it, you know this problem is quite real, and uh, how do we do? Uh, how do we do it so that we avoid those kind of problems as we go to the county? Okay. Thank you for that question. Uh, I believe the w the one thing that we have to consider, especially when we are talking about ICT uh, or we are talking about developmental kind of project, is that we need to take a long view. Uh, ICT in this country, seeing as we are still in, a bit in the infancy stage, has been growing very organically. So when things grow organically, you have one person taking one tangent, one person taking the other tangent, and 
we don't very often get opportunities to sit down on a table together and come up with a unified strategy for the next 5, 10, 15 years, whatever it is. So these kinds of problems are expected. Uh, ICT or technology by itself can be done, right? It just takes a lot more effort to get it done if you don't sit down at the beginning and plan. So ideally, this kind of sessions where we come together and say this is the roadmap we want to follow, this is the technologies we want to go, these are the services we want to deliver. Then we work backwards as a team and say these are the steps that we're going to follow to get to that point. Mm -hmm. So it's all about taking the long view. Uh, to grow organically is expected. Uh, and once you have grown organically, the important thing is to, to have the ability to take a step back and say, all right, let's stop here. Uh, we need to unify our strategy, we need to unify uh, the direction in which we are going, and we'll grow from there. Thank you, Andrew. Um, <coughs> Engineer Mosonik, um, maybe you could give us the other perspective, maybe the public sector. You are, you are currently you are in the Ministry of Industrialization. This is an area where the government has uh, come out very strongly as a flagship for development. Uh, maybe you could give us a perspective of the role of ICT infrastructure in this, uh, but more importantly, what would be the way forward in, in, in getting the, the counties, um, in, 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 in the government perspective, what would be the way forward in getting this um, ICT infrastructure in relation with industrial development? Okay, maybe. Let me take it from this perspective that um, of late you must have been reading quite a lot in terms of uh, what is the role of the county and what is the role of um, uh, national government in provision of different kind of services. And the way I look at it is um, you see the first phase is you look at those kind of services like we are talking about trade, investments, and uh, education and so on. Those terms can easily be taken up by county governments. Now, when we come to infrastructure, infrastructure requires quite a, a lot of investment, a lot of risks, and so on. So when I look at layers of infrastructure, I'm looking things like uh, energy, I'm looking things like ICT, I'm looking, uh, they are quite roads and all those kind of infrastructures. Now, when you look at that, these kind of projects actually require kind of massive kind of investment. So first of all, I think at this point in time, it may take quite a while for the county government to be able to get involved in provision for this kind of infrastructure. So that is one. And then number two is in terms of role of private sector. I'm seeing because again in terms it require quite a lot of investment. So I think the government involvement in provision for most of this ICT infrastructure is still a key uh, driver or enabler actually for this uh, provision for services. I, I think again during our discussion we came up um, and say what is it that uh, the county government actually requires? Or what kind of services do they require? And then from the services perspective now, that drives the kind of infrastructure which we need. But I think, again, in terms of superhighways, um, the bigger kind of infrastructure, I think that is still a government kind of involvement. And they can provide through what you call private uh, public partnership uh, kind of programs whereby uh, the government, because of risk, involved actually can be able to, to come in. Now, the other issue is, um, again, when it comes to which part of infrastructure should be provided by county government, and which actually infra part of infrastructure should be provided by uh, the national government vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the private sector. Again, I'm looking at the sewer highways uh, as being provided by, um, uh, by the government for private sector and then when we go towards the tail end, I think we are looking to that it may be data centers, the equipment and so on, in terms of getting uh, services to the, uh, to the end customer. That could easily be taken by county government and also maybe the private sector and so on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I want to take it back again to all of you, any one of you, uh, maybe as a way of rebuttal, <laughs> if you might call it that way. Um, in this issue of using ICT um, to open up the development in the counties, um, any, 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 any other comment you have before we open it to the public? Maybe if I may, John, 
I think we, we all understand that, that today there's a limitation in terms of the kind of investment that governments can make and they have to prioritize. Um, I would just mention that as far as ICT infrastructure is concerned, that it's a key enabler of e-government. E-government is, is obviously a key driver for service delivery. Um, and the evidence has shown that investment in ICT infrastructure um, also can contribute to GDP growth, creation of jobs, etc. particularly in, a, in the competitive <coughs> environment that we live in today. So I understand that uh, the minister and the government is faced with, with difficult choices, and I think it really has to be a case of we need the ICT infrastructure, how are we going to pay for it and provide it? And I agree that maybe looking at PPPs as an alternative way of financing that ICT infra infrastructure that is so critical to the development and delivery of services um, has to be a consideration. Thanks, Mike. Um, someone else? Uh, maybe just a comment. Um, the way we probably need to look at it is, uh, again, from um, the citizen themselves. What are they looking? How are they going to access uh, that information? How are they going to access these services? Then we move upwards. If I'm a citizen sitting somewhere in the village, what kind of device do I have? What kind of technology do I, do I use? Do I use mo uh, mobile, 4G, LTE, uh, Wi-Fi? Then we move to the county level. A lot of the counties, uh, probably, they are still trying to set up, struggling to set up. Uh, it's unlikely that uh, within the first five years, we'll find uh, counties uh, giving ICT the right priority, you know, putting up data centers and all that. So what I'd expect is probably, at a higher level, the national government should put in uh, you know, serious data centers with uh, shared services. Uh, it's unlikely that uh, a lot of these uh, counties will have the, um, uh, the capability to, let's say, engage Oracle directly to put in services. Uh, and so that's why I'll probably push that to the national government and say the national government should actually consider putting up the data centers, putting up basic connectivity to the counties, <coughs> and then mm. uh, taking up the initiative of uh, maybe negotiating with the multinationals for software, for shared services, and, uh, and the like. Then we also need to look at what are the citizens looking for? What, what kind of services are they looking for from the government? Today, if you need a passport, and in Mandera, you probably have to travel not less than 200 kilometers. You need to look at how do we get some of these services. Simple things, birth certificate, passport, title deeds, even death certificates. How do we push those services to the citizen without necessarily overburdening the county government with the nitty gritties of how to do the setup? And uh, I think that is something that probably the central government and the private sector should actually take up and uh, uh, consider it. Thanks, Mike. Just, just to build on to what uh, John was saying, I think as uh, service providers, it will be very, very important to partner with uh, a lot of these county governments, you know, to push for adoption and awareness of, uh, of technologies to the county citizens, um, you know, to drive growth, to drive <coughs> usage, you know. Otherwise, you, we know what ICT can, we know the different things we can deliver through ICT, you know, be it in health, education, we know the list. But how do we partner with these county governments to, to create more awareness to the county citizen and to drive usage? Uh, yesterday, we had a very interesting uh, fireside uh, discussion with a member of parliament from uh, East Marraquet, I believe, yeah? And uh, they have some coverage issues. East Marraquet has only about 25% 25, 25 coverage. So how do we fill the gap, you know, in coverage in East Marraquet? So we can go, we can deploy the technologies, you know, if it makes business sense. But, you know, again, are the users ready? Are the citizens ready? What does the county government need to put in place to drive usage? If I need to pay for my, say, land rates, you know, are the county governments going to support us by saying, you must go online and print these or pay these online or something like that? So we'll need <coughs> very good partnerships with the county government to drive uh, uh, usage of ICT in the counties. Yeah, maybe again, uh, let's, let's face the realities. Um, when we talk, let's say, of county governments, there are those counties like Nairobi, like Mombasa, who already have infrastructure. There are these counties like maybe Mandera or, or uh, Turkana and all those who really to provide services need a lot of investment and also put into consideration what you call the usage of those kind of facilities. 
So I, I think these are the challenges which you really face in terms of provision for this kind of infrastructure. But again, as government, the way perspective is, you must provide equal kind of services or access to this kind of, uh, uh, to all the citizens. So the challenge today is within the next five years, how are we going to face this kind of uh, implementation, assuming, let's say, uh, we have been given the challenge. So again, to provide to Nairobi, that one is very easy. It's not, it's not a big issue. And in fact, again, the demands for kind of what you call higher kind of uh, services, IM services, is actually within, let's say, in Nairobi here. So then come to Mandera. Then comes to, let's say, uh, Turkana. So how are we going to really uh, face this kind of challenge or how really to go around this kind of challenge. And that is why I'm saying is, you leave what we call private kind of investors to do it alone. They cannot, be, they cannot be able to do it. So again, we are seeing the government role in most of this kind of infrastructure. If we have really to provide services to, uh, to all the citizens uh, without any kind of digital divide.